Chapter 3, text number 2. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Sandi Pane, Sakrit, Proktam, Brahmadicha, Sa, Vistaram, Tasmai, Pradad, Varam, Putram, Mritam, Pancha, Janodarat, Sandi Pane, Sakrit, Proktam, Brahma Dicha Savistaram Tasmai Pradad Varam Putram Mritam Pancha Janodarat Sandi Pane Sakrit Proctam Brahma Dicha Savistaram Tasmai Pradad Varam Putram Mritam Pancha Jano Darat Sandi Pane Sakrit Proctam Brahma Dicha Savistaram Tasmai Pradad Varam Putram Mritam Pancha Jano Darat Sandi Pane of Sandi Pani Muni Sakrit, once only. Proctam, instructed. Brahma, all the Vedas with their different branches of knowledge. Aditya, after studying. Savistaram, in all details. Tasmai, unto him. Pradat, rewarded. Varam, a benediction. Putram, his son. Mritam, who was already dead. Panchajana, the region of the departed souls. Udarat, from within. Translation. The Lord learned all the Vedas with their different branches simply by hearing them once from his teacher, Sandipani Muni, whom he rewarded by bringing back his dead son from the region of Yamaloka. The Lord learned all the Vedas with their different branches, simply by hearing them once from his, yeah, from his teacher Sandipani Muni, whom he rewarded by bringing back his dead son from the region of Yamaloka, purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Jai Prabhupada. No one but the Supreme Lord can become well-versed in all the branches of Vedic wisdom simply by hearing once from his teacher. Nor can anyone bring a dead body back to life after the soul has already gone to the region of Yamaraj. But Lord Krishna ventured to the planet of Yamaloka and found the dead son of his teacher and brought him back to his father as a reward for the instructions received. The Lord is constitutionally well-versed in all the Vedas, and yet to teach by example that everyone must go to learn the Vedas from an authorized teacher and must satisfy the teacher by service and reward. He himself adopted this system. The Lord offered 
his services to his teacher, Sunday Panimuni, and the Muni, knowing the power of the Lord, asked something which was impossible to be done by anyone else. The teacher asked that his beloved son who had died be brought back to him, and the Lord fulfilled the request. The Lord is not therefore an ingrate, ingrate, ingrate. How do you say that word? You don't see that much of him. Ingrate. The Lord is not therefore an ingrate to anyone who renders him some sort of service. The devotees of the Lord who always engage in his loving service are never to be disappointed in the progressive march of devotional service. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and it was Srila Prabhupada who opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I therefore offer my very, very respectful obeisances unto him. There's a story um, within this text, within this, about Sandipani Muni and how his son had drowned. So Sandipani Muni decided that he was very, very disturbed that his son had been drowned because he was quite young. And he thought, well, if anyone can help me, if only he could come back, if anyone can bring him back, it will be Krishna. So as he was imparting knowledge to Krishna, he was acting the part of a teacher. He thought, this is an opportune time to ask him to please bring my son back back to me. Now what had happened to Sandipani Muni, Mount Muni's son, was that he drowned. So Krishna said, yes, I will do this for you. You are my teacher. Most certainly I will do this. So he ordered the controlling deity of the sea, you please bring this boy back. You cause the drowning of the son of our teacher. I order you to return him. Of course, the ocean deity was very respectful and he bowed and offered obeisances and replied to Krishna, the boy was not actually taken by me, but he was captured by a demon named Panchajana. Panchajana resides deep in the water in the shape of a conch shell so Krishna dove into the very deep water and caught hold of the demon and killed him. But the understanding was that the son of Sandipani Muni was in Panchajana's belly. So he killed Panchajana, but he couldn't find the son in his belly. So he took the dead body in the form of the conch and drove in his chariot to the abode of Yamaraj. And Yamaraj, of course, as we know, is the superintendent of death. Krishna arrived there and blew his conch, and Yamaraj appeared. So respectfully, very respectfully, Yamaraj received Krishna, offered obeisances, and Krishna asked him to return the boy. You should immediately return the son of my teacher. And of course, Yamaraj complied. And the teacher, Sandipani Muni, was very, very much satisfied. So if you haven't heard that story, that's one version, because I understand with a lot of our stories, there's uh, lots of versions or varieties, but that's one version. Now, to think about a teacher, especially um, Vedically, 
A teacher is very, very, very much respected. A teacher imparts knowledge, gives wisdom, helps us to understand many things. Teacher is guru. You know we have a great debt to guru. We worship guru. So teachers fall into a similar category. We have to them a debt of gratitude for helping us. Mind you, these days it's quite different, as we know. Now, just recently, for example, just to give a couple of examples of the attitude toward teachers nowadays. In um, Perth, at the end of last month only, a 14-year-old girl student stabbed her teacher female teacher, 55 years old. When they asked her, why did you do this? Did you have a blank or a block out? What happened? She said, my intention was to kill her. She didn't kill her, but she injured her. And apparently, nobody could make head and tail of it. They couldn't understand it because... Previously, the girl and the teacher had quite a good relationship and the teacher had been helping her with his studies. And so it was quite bewildering. The girl received three years incarceration, of, quick, of which, of course, X amount of time is taken off from that, as we know, but the, the maximum was three years incarceration, and admitted I wanted to kill her. I bought a knife, I came to school, I wanted to kill her. Why? She was asked, of course. Obvious question, why? And she said, I don't know. I don't know. One example. Welcome to 2022. There was a, a five-year-old in Florida, a five-year-old boy who rushed at his teacher, knocked her over, and a piece of furniture fell onto her head. And she was quite badly injured too. So this is just a couple of, a five-year-old boy, a 14-year-old girl, this is what they do to their teachers. This is definitely alluding to mental illness. And this is what I'd like to base my talk on today is mental, mental illness and the mind. Um, at the moment, it's in epidemic proportions. Actually, the statistics are that for all the people who are killed on the roads every year, three times as many people commit suicide. So why are they committing suicide? They are so disturbed in the mind, and the mind tells them, the mind dictates to them. This is the point. The mind dictates to them, oh, you've had enough, or this is unbearable, or you can't tolerate this anymore. Now it's time, you're gonna go. You're gonna commit suicide. And the rate, interestingly enough, the rate of suicide um, from women to men, is that men are three times more prone to commit suicide. That was quite surprising to me. And why is that, I wonder? Anyone got any ideas why that might be? Why are the three times more men committing suicide than women every year? Yes? Exactly, exactly. They're less, yes, they keep, lock a lot of things in within themselves. So, epidemic proportions, we have mental illness, anxiety, and depression. And the ladies beat the men in this category because the ladies are more inclined to become anxious and depressed than the men. 
Well, the authorities are very, very busy uh, addressing this huge problem. I'm sure it's a problem all over the world, but it's certainly a big problem in Australia. Because then, when people become anxious, depressed, many of them resort to drugs. Drugs? Well, there's plenty of drugs in the system, prescribed drugs, and there's plenty of illegal drugs. They seem to be very readily available. And of course, this takes a terrible toll on an individual, their body and their mind. But their negative feelings are too much to bear. Anxiety, anger, frustration, so many negative emotions. Because, especially in Kali Yuga, intelligence has diminished and ignorance abounds. So instead of living in the mode of goodness, the lower modes of passion and ignorance are very prominent. And we know that passion leads to misery and ignorance leads to foolishness. The biggest insanity, and we all know this, is that everyone thinks Aham mati. I am me, this body. Almost everybody thinks like that. Identification with the body as the self. But of course, we know from Shastra, it's quite different. And as I am the body, I have senses and I desire enjoyment. I want to have a good time. I want to feel good. Whatever I need to do that, uh, to feel good, that's what I will do. And of course it begins with a nice wife, a nice husband, a nice home, family, riches, prestige. All of these things the living entity seeks in his lifetime, generally. The mind, according to Bhagavad Gita, in the, mi the mind is the center of all activities. Let's have a look at this verse, this amazing verse. Bhagavad Gita 342, I think. Does anyone know what 342 is? Indriyani Paranyahu. Recognize that one? The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind, and he, the soul, is higher than the intelligence. And in this verse, we learn that for our welfare, our ultimate welfare, body, mind, and spirit, is that we should use our intelligence. And the tele intelligence is the next door neighbor of the, the soul proper. The senses are the different outlets for the activities of lust. Lust is reserved within the body, but it's given vent through the senses. Therefore, the senses are superior to the body. But these outlets are not in use when there is superior consciousness or Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness, the soul makes direct connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this is what we are aspiring within our practice of Krishna consciousness, is to control the mind by the intelligence, next door neighbor to the soul. This is, it's actually quite simple when we refer to scripture, but most people, they don't know this. And they are driven by the mind, 
And what does the mind do? It rants and raves. It goes back into the past and regrets the past or relishes the past or wishes that they'd done something different in the past. It goes into the future, what I want to aspire, when I finish this course, when I get that new job, always, but never living within the moment, always in the past, always in the future, and they don't know how to control the mind. Therefore, the medical, uh, the medical facilities, they provide them with all sorts of drugs, uppers and downers, and, but we know that these drugs, of course, they're doing a job. They're doing their job. Sometimes it's necessary, especially when people are very violent. The mind is driving them crazy. But we know that this is just, it's just not the answer. We have to go to the root cause of the problem, which is the uncontrolled mind. So for that, we require a qualified teacher, especially in the line of disciplic succession, a very qualified person who can guide us, someone that we agree to follow and take up their instructions. Because in another verse in that chapter, Krishna says to Arjuna, Regulate the senses, Arjuna. Get those senses regulated. Get control of them. You tell the senses what to do. Intelligence will tell the mind what to do. And mainly to switch off from all this madness. The mind is taken to be the self, unfortunately. And we know ourselves um, that... We've had our, we do, and we have had our difficulties with the mind and controlling our anger and, and different emotions. But at least we're able to try and follow a qualified teacher to become once again in control of the mind. Because the mind is very, very cluttered, always active, and so much to think about. There's so many things to do. When the mind is active or activated in doing things, we can call it object consciousness. It is actually, in some fields, it's called object consciousness. That means you require the mind to, to do certain things uh, throughout the day. But that really has to be balanced with... Um, space, what they call space consciousness. So, of course, in the early 70s, um, meditation became very popular. So well, there's so many um, masters of meditation and people were really tuned in to meditating because they would meditate, for example, with the prominent person was Maharishi, um, they would meditate for 20 minutes in the morning and then 20 minutes in the afternoon. You'd switch off, go somewhere, go into a, your bedroom or go somewhere, switch off, sit down comfortably, nice cushion, maybe warm blanket, close your eyes, you can light a candle and chant within your silent meditation, chant within your mind uh, the mantra that the Maharishi had given you. And then people, those people who did that, interestingly enough, were the hippie type of people. So the hippie type of people were, were known for love and flowers and dreamy. They always looked dreamy. And of course, often it was like a pot that they were taking as well. But it became, um, it became a great interest at one stage. But since then, early 70s, in 2022, like everybody is crazy. Everybody is crazy. I myself admit I am crazy. 
Think about it. Just think about it. Our behavior, our thoughts, our madness. But at least we're striving to become sane. So in addition to being conscious of things and dealing with everyday life, you know, we have sense perceptions, thoughts, emotions, then there is an undercurrent of awareness that some of us may experience. There's a current of awareness. Sometimes we feel it when, um, when we get sleepy. If you think about when you get sleepy and you're just in like a dozy state, what is your mind doing? It's not giving you too much trouble. It's, it's fairly quiet. And it's a dreamy state. It's rather nice. Uh, people get that with television. That, that television is very popular. It, it brings one into a state where the mind is quiet. So that's another way to quiet the mind, but we don't necessarily recommend watching all the nonsense on television. That will just agitate the mind. And, um, you know, people get that from booze, from drinking and drugs, with other side effects as well. But the desire is to come to a, a pleasant state of being. Everyone wants to be comfortable. Everyone wants to feel good. Nobody wants to be angry and agitated and hate people. Nobody really wants that. But there is no, they don't know how to become free. We'll go to the doctor. The doctors do a wonderful job in what they do, which is a, it's not the answer. It's not the answer at all. So to change that mental platform, we have our shasta, we have our chanting, and that's why we're very keen to present that to others. We must learn from an experienced person, one who's already practicing and showing themselves to be completely self-realized. Because we really need to concentrate the mind on Krishna, Krishna's form, the sound vibration of Krishna. And the mind is so restless, you may experience, as do I, even trying to chant 16 rounds every day. It, I start my rounds by saying, today my mind will not drift. Well, that's laughable. But I say that. My mind will not drift. I will just remain fixed on that sound vibration. But it isn't very long before the mind is thinking about the rest of the day or what happened yesterday or what you need to do. Well, of course, that's natural and one shouldn't be despondent. One shouldn't be disturbed by that too much. But rather, take note of Krishna's instructions. I think it's in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, yato yato nischalati manas chanchala mastiram. From wherever and wherever the mind wanders, due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must withdraw it, bring it back under the control of the self. So you chant your mind, you bring it back. You chant, you bring it back. You have to have the determination that this is the most important thing in life that I try to become free from the entanglement of the material world with all its horror, with all its miseries, with all its madness, and with all its very, very disturbed people. Therefore, I am determined that I will follow a self-realized soul very carefully, and if I happen to have difficulties, if I happen to fall down or lapse at some point, I will pick myself up because that's what Krishna has told us to do in the Bhagavad Gita. Bring it back under the control of the self. It requires like conviction and intelligence, some intelligence. That intelligence is, I am convinced that this is a way out of this horror. And so I can become healthy again because we are in an unhealthy state in varying degrees. 
You've got some people, they just, we know they kill themselves. Devotees kill themselves, which is very sad. I find that very sad. So we might think, well, that's all right for you to say, but it is very difficult day by day. But, you know, God loves a trier. We make one endeavor. We take one step towards Krishna. He'll take a dozen towards us. Just showing that, yes, I really want to try. And then we lapse. We just pick ourselves up and we do it again. We can do it with strong association. So that's why we congregate together, we associate with each other, we read together. Like this morning, we have the ladies at um, Mother Jagat Priya's home. We have a, every Tuesday morning, we have a scriptural reading together. And we chant, and we chant together, or otherwise in front of our deities. And that is our methodology. That's what we do. We think about Krishna, we chant, we read, we attend um, services uh, to see Krishna and worship him with other devotees, strong association, regular reading, and developing that faith. And that faith will develop with the patience and the de determination. Because patience is very much lacking in Kali Yuga. But it's really worth developing with intelligence, we control the mind. The mind does not control us. And at the moment, the mind is controlling most people. And for us, to different degrees, the mind controls us. So we have object consciousness. We deal with our everyday activities, our everyday life. And we balance that with space consciousness. So. For example, in the morning, my husband and I read, after breakfast, we read Srimad Bhagavatam. And then, um, later on in the day, we read other books, whatever. They, we've just finished the Mahabharat. And, um, and we chant. If we have extra time, we chant. So we break the day up. We're, we're always having some spiritual activity away from the shopping, the cooking, the cleaning, the, all the things that we're doing. We break it up. Now we're reading. It, it, it's really reinforcing. It's just so energizing spiritually. Oh, wasn't that nice? Then you discuss it, you know. And, um, and then chanting together. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful feeling that you're controlling the mind. The mind's not controlling you. The mind may say, oh, skip it today, go and do this, go and do that. But we say no. It's actually a buzz saying no to the mind. It's a buzz. And then the chanting that we do is so relishable. And then we look forward again to more reading. Slowly, very slowly, we're reading. We're actually analyzing every sentence almost. And it becomes a way of life. And that I could sort of recommend to everyone and hope that maybe you can um, derive more strength because that's what we're looking for. I go to a class and I'm very much looking for hints, guidelines. I want to talk about how I can become a better person how I, how I can become more spiritual, how I can develop better qualities. It's all there. It's all there for us. And we're the leaders in society. You know that? We're the lead and even within our society, some of our members are suffering terribly with the afflictions that, uh, uh, that are afflicting the whole planet like that. So... Thank you very much for listening. If there's any comments or anyone has anything to share, I, I'm not sure. I think you finish, we finish at 8.30, is that correct? Because it's 20 past 8 now.
anyone's got anything to share or like to say, please do. Sorry, what was that? You know, we are so lucky, incredibly lucky when you think about um, the suffering people out there with, with their mental problems, and they don't know. Sometimes I feel guilty I'm not doing enough preaching. <laughs> I need to reach more people. But um, I don't know. I mean, it's not like it was years ago where you stood on the, on the street with books. You know, well, it still happens. Rupa Raghunath Prabhu does that. Amazing. He's a, a blast from the past. But just really, I, I think it's a good sign too when we're concerned about others. We feel a bit concerned about others and feel empathy and want to help, want to share. But even by elevating our consciousness, we're elevating the whole atmosphere, aren't we? To some degree, the purer our chanting, our intent, that actually has an effect in the atmosphere. And I read one time that even as, um, a small percentage of spirituality can have an impact over a, a whole mass. I think I could somehow or other, I, I can imagine that, I can believe that. So, so we just start every day with a fresh resolution Today, <laughs> I'm going to really concentrate. I mean, I know Krishna really appreciates that intention, even though we're not able to do it. And then one day, maybe, we will. We will be able to do it. Mm. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it's a yeah. And it's a practice. I'm thinking it's a practice. Practice makes perfect. When you practice and you practice and you practice, I mean, and people. When you think of sports people and high achievers. You know, how much effort they put into education, into working, into giving up the so-called pleasures of life in order to make an impact and achieve. And, and, and they do that, don't they? Well, we can do that. Let, I, think, I was thinking recently, you can do that. You be an achiever. Do it. The non-devotees do it and become very successful. So we shouldn't feel we're weak. We're not weak. We've got Krishna. We know Krishna's in the heart. And we have all the devotees around us. And every facility to help us. And, and especially this particular temple. I mean, everybody wants to come to New Govardhan, really. I've heard. 
because it's just so wonderful in all aspects, in all ways. The facility, the programs, the decorations even, the most amazing <laughs> decorations on uh, festival days and, and uh, there's just so many things to appreciate and take advantage of. So we're very, very lucky like that. And of course, if we can help others on, on our way, well, yes, most certainly we want to do that. One of the, um, one of the more recent realizations that I've had, well, I've had, but it's become very um, important to me, is to, I mean, for self-help and, and for helping everybody, is to treat everybody, every person, as you would like to be treated. It's like that you have that verse on your, on your uh, fridge. I have also all over the place books and there's uh, markers in them and there's notes everywhere, stuck up everywhere of things I want to be reminded of because we are so very, very forgetful. And that is one thing. It's like treat other people the way you would like to be treated. And you'll find how much your life um, becomes more and more relishable, satisfying. That's just one thing. I've got lots and lots. Yeah, like that. So it's, does anyone else have anything else before we close down? Okay. Hare Krishna. Oh, you got something? The death, yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of wealth is required to pay back? What kind of wealth? How someone pay back the well, there is a prayer which says I can never re there somewhere. We, I can never repay. I can never repay. Because we have like, also we have like, thinking of the kids today and what they do to their teachers, you know. And I'm thinking our teachers, our guru, we, we give dakshin. So we give some monetary, um, something monetary. And also the best thing you can do actually is to follow their instructions so rigidly with, without, if you can, as, or endeavor to follow their instructions. And that is the greatest joy to the spiritual teacher. That is the greatest joy. And a disappointment to the spiritual masters is when the devotees do not follow. They're not hearing the spiritual master. They're not taking advantage of his wisdom, of his help. And they veer. And, and uh, look, we're all weak to some degree and... You know, we're not defaming anyone who has difficulties. I've had difficulties. We all have difficulties of some time. But if we can just pick ourselves up and try to get on track all the time, that is the most pleasing thing for the spiritual master. And they'll know. They'll know. If you're, if you're on a line and you're uh, very sincere and very keen, the spiritual master will know. Because sometimes we think, oh, you won't know, you know, who am I and this. But they know. They know. It's very, it's very exciting, actually. It's, Krishna consciousness is so exciting. But we had to really think about it and, you know, we had to really analyze it. And, you know, the importance of the mind, you know. But it, all the um, references are in these scriptures that the mind is the... It's not a place where you want to be, except to do your uh, everyday activities. Otherwise, yeah, we, we, we control the mind. It will not control us. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Exactly 8.30.